Thank you both. Done. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Reese, and today I have the unique pleasure and honour of both giving away my beautiful mum, Patricia, to Nigel Deebel, and also I have to stand in front of all you expectant people as Nigel's best man. Fantastic. On behalf of mum and Nigel, I'd like to uh, thank you all for coming today. Um, it's been very special, obviously. Personally, I'd prefer you all to stay at home to make this a little less nerve-wracking <laughs> than what it is. What can you do? Uh, let me just drop that one down there. Uh, that one didn't work. Right, here we go. I try to keep my speech uh, short as possible so that we can all crack on with um, what we've all come here for, and that's the amazing spectacle that will be Nige dancing. <laughs> in about 25 minutes. Make sure you're around for that. That's all I can say. Uh, for, so how, how do I know the groom? How do I know Nigel? Well, I've known Nigel for about 14, 14, 15 years now, so it was about 68, 69 when the first night. <laughs> um, actually, the first night that um, I met Nigel, um, it was the night that Evander Holyfield first fought Mike Tyson. The whole world had been waiting over a decade for the two ageing brutes who had seen better days and had a colourful history of conquest to finally get it together. Ladies and gentlemen, that day has finally arrived. <laughs> so, on the night in question, um, myself, Mum and, and Wayne, who you heard earlier, we went down to our good friend Bob Steele's house to watch the fight. We've been there a while, and then shortly after, uh, this lanky, swaggering Clint Eastwood lookalike came swaying into the room. I instantly knew that just the sort of loser that my mum would probably end up with. But I actually hit it off and started dating soon after. Uh, my mother's neglect didn't, uh, didn't go unnoticed. <laughs> Days at a time without any food at all. Which was actually quite surprising considering Nigel bought mum over a hundred pounds worth of uh, meat for his first few dates in the hope that he'd get a nice romantic home-cooked meal. Neither, neither myself, Wayne or Nigel saw any of that meat, so God knows where it went. I have no idea. <laughs> Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, Dave, uh, Dave. Mike still painfully uh, remembers that and he likes to call it Meat Day around our house. I prefer uh, Meat Gate, so I think that's a bit scandalous. But um, to be fair, I could have warned Nigel about Mum's neglectful ways. So I'm uh, still actually waiting for £70 of birthday money that she's borrowed from me when I was seven years old. I'm sure it didn't go unnoticed amongst you all that she managed to squeeze in her wedding the year before her 50th birthday. <laughs> so we now we need to uh, give up more of our precious time and money to celebrate the big 5-0 next year. But um, obviously, we all love Trisha and we wouldn't change her for the world. And I think you'll all agree that she looks one in a million today. Yeah. No, you look like you were one in a raffle. <laughs> uh, to be fair, he has scrubbed up quite well. He has, but it's, it's quite an obvious thing, he's copied my outfit. Uh, in all honesty, though, it's not a thing that I wouldn't do for Nige. And uh, there's, not, there's not, nothing that he'd do for me. In, in fact, we spent a great deal of time and effort doing absolutely nothing for each other. I think that this collective apathy for each other's well-being is uh, the bedrock of our relationship. And it will stand us in very good stead as we look to live, to, live together for the next few years until we uh, move Nigel into that retirement home just, just after the 2012 London Olympics. <laughs> but who is Nigel Deeble, the man? Seriously, who is he? I've known him for 10 years, I'm, I'm his best man, and he's a bloody enigma. 
By the way, Kieran, that word was enigma. I don't want any trouble. Uh, how do you compare that? Security in the house. Yeah, but I, I basically, I sat literally for minutes collating all together all the information that uh, I know about Nigel, the little tidbits, and uh, what did I find out? What did I find out? All my, all my research, um, once I collated it all, found out that Nigel's a man of um, simple tastes, <laughs> simple pleasures. His outfit is basically doubled with the uh, fabulous groom outfit that he's, that he's wearing today. And Nigel is a man of two big passions. He loves to fish, for compliments mostly, but sometimes he actually gets off his arse and goes out and attempts to catch some fish. I, I want to say fly fishing, but I'm not 100% I'm not sure. It's, we're not that close. It's not that I'm ever going to be his best man in any event. But, um, his, other, his other major passion is cod. Now, the, uh, the blissfully unaware amongst you might think I'm still talking about fishing. But judging by some of the animated faces, I can see Adam over there and a couple of crestfallen ladies faces in the house. You might know that I'm talking about Call of Duty video game on the Xbox 360. I'll tell you, if, if you could marry games consoles, we might not all be here today. That's the right answer. To be fair, for an old guy, and Nigel is old, I mean, he's the only person I know that gets nostalgic when he reads the Bible. So an old guy, he's actually taken to Xbox Live fantastically well, it's quite impressive. <laughs> and uh, I have to say that um, Nigel has um, actually got a very impressive kill-death ratio, which I'm sure we'll uh, share with you at the bar later on. And I'm afraid I'm to blame for introducing him to this uh, fast-paced, addictive gaming lifestyle that he now leads. But I'm sure Mum will be the first to agree that it's become a very potent weapon in your arsenal of getting Nigel to do exactly what you want. I tell you, there's literally not one chore that Nigel wouldn't do for a couple of hours or hits with uh, Call of Duty. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get that away. No, we're, uh, we're nearly at the end, actually. All right, okay, so if he's not killing Germans on the computer, or uh, uh, buying dead rainbow trout and pawning it off as his own. <laughs> Nigel's actually a very upstanding gent. Uh, keeping everyone safe at Terminal 2, looking after his... Terminal 1. Terminal 1, my bad. Shows how much I know. Terminal 1. That's why we've got a Looking after his uh, very affectionate, lovable family dog, Dave, as uh, Wayne mentioned earlier. And of course, being the, the perfect companion to his beautiful new wife. <coughs> Uh, I, I suppose that I, I can say that they are a perfect uh, couple for each other. Uh, they're actually a great example of what happens when the when the irresistible force meets the immovable object. <laughs> Stalemate. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I think you'll all agree it's been a, a fantastic day today. No doubt organised on a budget that Bargain Hunt wouldn't be envious of. <laughs> it was fantastic nonetheless. I'd like to thank everybody um, whose hard work and kindness have made the day what it is. Um, I'd like to thank the, the bridesmaids, as Nice did, with the lovely today. Um, I think the, the uh, readers, fantastic, Joseph and um, Philip, for your very eloquent and made, done a much better job than I've done up here. Um, the the ring bearers, I thought, showed maturity beyond their years. <laughs> they were awesome. Um, and obviously the, the ushers, who had a very tough time today, and on top of that, some of the stuff that Mum's been demanding of him over the last couple of days, so that, like far beyond what an usher is supposed to look after. I don't think the eggheads have to store as much information in their heads as uh, Emma and John have had to do today, so they've done extremely well. Um, I'd obviously like to congratulate Nigel for finally making an honest woman of my mum. She looks uh, extremely happy today, and I know that that's all to do with you. Uh, I'd also like to thank you for choosing me as your best man. And I'd like to thank you for being the most dependable, understanding, giving and forgiving and positive realm, mo male role model in my life. You've uh, paid for me to get back from travelling, supported me through university, taxi-driven me well into my twenties, 
and basically been there whenever called upon. You've only been my stepdad for a few hours, but you've been my father figure for more than 10 years, and so really it's you that's the best man. And thanks to the few of you that actually laughed at some of my jokes. Uh, I'd like you all to be upstanding now. So uh, raise a toast to, to the future happiness and life of celibacy of my mum and dad. Thank you again to the bride and groom.